I was asked to do a self-portrait in six different media for Jerry's Artorama. One section of the portrait I decided to do in pen and ink, and I'm doing the underneath work in a sepia tone. The ink that I'm using in this repetograph pen is actually not ink at all, but is in fact acrylic paint made to go in airbrushes. If it's good enough for an airbrush, it certainly is good enough for a repetograph pen. So here I'm using a blue cerulean paint on the blue denim apron that I was wearing. Here, achieving flesh tones by building up layers of yellow, reds, browns, really using every color at my disposal to achieve just the tonal quality that I want. This is what the drawing looked like at the end of the pen and ink process, and now I'm about to transition to airbrush. The first thing I do is make zero graphic copies of the pen and ink drawing and cut out each individual piece, and I'm going to use the cutout paper as a mask for applying the airbrush. Airbrush works amazingly well in combination with pen and ink because it leaves no texture of its own so it allows the beautiful texture of the pen and ink to show through in the final product. At this point I'm applying blue paint around the cutout mask shaped like my hand and then brown along the cabinet. When the airbrushing is finished I can pick up an X-Acto knife and scratch through the airbrush to get just the highlight that I want. Then use an eraser again to get just the right degree of white highlights on every part of the drawing. This is the final illustration. I've achieved exactly the color that I want and the tonal values that I want with pen and ink and airbrush, and yet the beauty of that cross-hatching still shows through in every part of the drawing. Let me show you a number of other illustrations that I've done through the years using this technique. Pen and ink underneath and airbrush, usually just a little bit of airbrush on top. During the many years that I worked as a full-time illustrator, this was really my signature technique. And I think the reason I love it so much is because I was able to achieve detail, rich, vivid color, and yet always having that playful texture of cross-hatching underneath. Now, some of you might be wondering if I ever do colored pen and ink without the airbrush on top. And indeed, I do. Here's one example of such an illustration layer upon layer upon layer of colored pen and ink cross-hatching on vellum. But that's really going to be the subject of my next video, which I'll call Pen and Ink Cross-Hatching State of the Art. Please stay tuned, and thanks for watching.